mental toughness. I want you to get off of this call when we're done and say, you know what? I'm going to be tougher, man. I'm going to be tougher. I'm not going to let this dumb shit rattle me. You cannot let the external world influence your internal world. You have to control your mind. You have to control your emotions. You have to control your vibrational frequency. You are emitting out into the universe 24, seven, 365. Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Alex Morton Show. Super, super excited that you're here with me today to really dive deep into the mind. We're going to dive deep today on mental toughness. Now, a lot of people out there, they stress the importance of learning how to open up a prospect, present to the prospect, close the prospect, overcome objections say the right thing at the right time when you're dialing the phones, all of these physical things. And let me tell you something. You have to master skills to be a successful individual, right? Like if you're watching this, no matter what industry you're in, profession you're in, career you're in, it really doesn't matter. There are certain skill sets you've got to learn to get into that top 1%. Now, you're probably not watching my show unless you want to become a multimillionaire and live a badass existence on planet Earth. Now, I'm never the person to say everybody's got to become a multimillionaire. It's not me. I've met people, I've worked with people in third world countries where an extra one, two, three thousand dollars a month completely changes their financial situation in their family. And I have worked with people uh, that they have goals to earn a million dollars every 30 days throughout the year, right? But I will tell you this, all of those physical things are very, very important and you can get the sales scripts and you can learn all of these different rebuttals and different ways to overcome objections and all that and all that stuff. However, if you don't build mental toughness, mental fortitude, control the mind, the navigational system of your entire existence, ladies and gentlemen, you will not win at a high level. And if you do get lucky and win at a high level for one moment in time, it won't take you long to fall down the mountain of success. So I was uh, on the uh, internet earlier today, right? Googling some stuff. And I want, I want to read you the definition of mental toughness. Okay. Mental toughness is often the differentiating factor between success and failure. It is the ability to persevere through adversity, maintain focus in the face of massive distractions, and remain resilient despite setbacks. It's the ability to stay calm under pressure, bounce back from small little temporary failures, and continue to push fucking forward. Okay. So let's break that down a little bit deeper. You are a human being. You are God's highest form of creation. I want you to understand that really quick. Okay. You are God's highest form of creation, capable of anything and everything. I don't care if you're studying the Bible, the Torah, the book of Mormon, the Quran, or any, anything in between. Let me tell you something. You are a human being, right? You have the ability, me and you have the capability of self-awareness. Me and you, we can make decisions that quick and alter the course of our life forever, okay? Your dog boomer at home cannot do that. Your your little kitty cat, all right, in in your uh, in, in the litter box right now in your studio apartment in New York City, all right, that little kitty cat, that thing cannot do the things me and you can do. Right now, we can make a decision and go straight to the airport and fly to London, fly to Dubai, fly to Accra, Ghana, if we want to. Me and you right now, we can get into the stock market if it's open and invest all of our money in one stock if we want to, right? We have the power to make decisions, make it happen, and do what we want to do. So knowing that to be true, knowing that you are a God's highest form of creation, capable of anything and everything, right? You should have the mindset that says, you know what? I'm going to decide the life I want to live. I'm going to say no to everything else. I'm going to find out how to obtain and achieve this life I want to live so bad. 
and then I'm going to work diligently, stay focused, build mental toughness, and make it happen. When I was 16 years old, I remember seeing all the previews on HBO. You guys remember HBO before Netflix and Amazon Prime and all this stuff, right? And they were premiering this show called Entourage, right? And me and my friends were 16 years old, excited to watch this show, Sunday night, 9 p.m., HBO, primetime TV, right? We all go to my buddy Taylor Van Landingham's house, real name, right? We're sitting in this house, Entourage shows up on the screen immediately, well, you're all glued to this thing, right? Vinny Chase, all of his homies traveling the world, movie star, making lots of money, partying with, uh, you know, girls, spending money, nice cars, Ferraris, living in mansions, eating at all this fancy schmancy caviar, pasta, all these different things. And we're like, yo, you know, we're over here, Columbus, Ohio, small little town, two pizza shops, two ice cream parlors, you know, 800 kids in my whole entire high school. And I'm watching this show thinking to myself, holy shit, I don't know what this is, but if that's what success looks like, if that's what freedom smells like and tastes like, all right, and acts like, that's what I want. The show ends, all of my friends say, you know what, you know, that's all that's all fun and dandy. That would be nice to live that life, right? But that doesn't happen for people like us. That that happens for people that live in Los Angeles, California, or Miami, Florida, or come from a certain type of family and all these different things. And at that moment in time, at 16 years old, I remember leaving Taylor's house, getting inside of my dad's 1998 decently beat up Ford Expedition. I love that thing, man. Driving home, I'll never forget the, the rain was dropping on the windshield. And I remember listening to the rainfall on the windshield and I was just sitting there, no music was on and I could not get my mind away from the images I saw in that show, being young, being successful, being being known, being able to cut the lines at the club, being able to cut the reservation list at the fanciest spot to go eat dinner, right? I didn't know what that was, but I said, you know what? That's the life I'm going to live. And I found out very quickly, right? If you're not going to be the next, you know, LeBron James, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Drake and hip hop, Maluma or Bad Bunny and a reggaeton, right? How else do you get that life unless you come from a, you know, a shit ton of money from mommy and daddy, which I didn't, okay? It was getting involved in business. It was getting involved in business. It was becoming an entrepreneur, all right? I was into that word entrepreneur before it was cool, trendy, and sexy. I found Tony Robbins' personal power audio tapes in our basement in Columbus, Ohio. Thank God for my mom and dad. My dad gave me rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki, fourth or fifth grade, right? Then we would play cast the, the, the cash flow board game, talking about assets, liabilities, real estate, investments, okay? I remember whether you like Donald Trump or not, it really doesn't matter, but he had a book back in the day called Think Big and Kick Ass, it was called, I'm pretty sure. And I remember taking Think Big and Kick Ass, putting it inside of my biology textbook, going to Bexley High School and reading about business and real estate, investments, mental toughness, fortitude. I was inspired by Trump's story. I was inspired by Robert Kiyosaki's story of rags to riches, right? So at a young age, I became obsessed with finding out why some people made it and other people did it. And I'll tell you guys right now, one of the cornerstones to success is what I just talked about. Mental toughness. One more time. It is a differentiating factor between success and failure. It is the ability to, per to persevere. Persevere, which means push through, go through, whatever it takes. Persevere through adversity. Maintain focus in the face of distraction. Okay, Are you going to have adversity in your business? Are you going to have the enemies come up and come against you and try to take your dream away from you? Of course they are. And if they haven't tried yet, they're on their way to your front door. That's the way it works. Because when you step out and you say, I, I don't like it here. I want to go there, right? The difference between here and there 
This, this right here, this is just time, energy, effort, focus, and consistency, and discipline, and decision. So when you say, I don't like you here anymore, I'm going to go there. People are going to try to take your dream, steal your dream, manipulate you, get you involved in, you know, bullshit investments, try to talk you out of what you're trying to do, say things to you like, don't you just want to have fun? Don't you want to just go out there and party seven and a half nights a week? Why is money so important to you? Aren't you satisfied with the Honda Accord or, you know, the Tesla Model 3 or whatever the hell people are driving these days, right? You're going to have to have the mental toughness and the desire and the discipline to say, no, I ain't happy with where I am. I'm going there, right? So I saw Entourage at 16 years old. I made the decision right then and there. 18 years old, I say, all right, I'm leaving Ohio. I'm going to Arizona. I go to Arizona State, and now I'm out there, and the rest is history. But between that moment at 16 and then 18 and then 21, finding direct selling, and now at 34 years old, you know, still doing amazing things out there, in the business world, right? I'll tell you guys right now, if I didn't have mental toughness, there's there, there'd be no way I'd be talking to you on the Alex Morton Show right now. There'd be no way that I would be able to go to 77 countries and speak and train over a million people, help 700 plus people get to six and seven figure incomes, help people become multi-millionaires in their 20s. No way in hell any of that happens without mental toughness, okay? So let's talk about you building mental toughness, right? This isn't about me. This is about you. This could be called the you show instead of the Alex Morton show. Okay. Cause it's all about you. It ain't about me. It's about you. I want to help you achieve your goals. I want to help you achieve your dreams. I, I, I want to help you get to the top 1% and your life insurance agency. I want to see you get on stage and, and, and get the ring and become a million dollar earner in your network marketing company, okay? But like I said at the beginning of this episode, you can learn all the scripts, all the rebuttals, how to overcome objections, how to open, present, close, invite the right way, do a three-way call, bang the phones, dial the phones, how to sell on the phone, how to sell on a Zoom call, all the physical stuff you can learn. You can learn it all. You can learn it all pretty pretty quickly, by the way. And it can take you that long to learn, right? My first year in uh, direct sales, right? I made I made 13 grand, which was, you know, not good. Second year, I studied, I practiced, I got disciplined. I made the decision. I said, let's, let's go out there and make it happen. Made my first six-figure income. Made a million bucks before my 25th birthday. I'm not saying it was easy. It wasn't hard, though. It wasn't hard. It wasn't easy. It wasn't hard. It was simple, but it took discipline and it took mental toughness. So let's get into some mental toughness, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, you need to learn to embrace adversity, all the setbacks, all the difficulties. All of these things are actually opportunities for you to grow, learn, adapt, change, evolve, and get better. When I built my, one of my first organizations as an entrepreneur and my income would fall because a leader would leave or customers would quit. All of those painful moments, all those painful memories. I remember questioning myself, is this for me? Should I maybe go get a job, right? Maybe all of these haters and, you know, bullshitters are actually right telling me that it's actually difficult to become a successful person and own your own business, okay? Let me tell you something. The mental toughness would kick in and say, you know what? Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep doing what you need to do. So all of these setbacks and difficulties and challenges, look at them now as learning opportunities, right? Get better, right? If you screw something up, man, we screw up. We all screw up all day long. I, I mess up all the time. It's okay. If I mess up one time, it's okay. If I mess up the same thing again, that's a choice. That's a choice. So don't screw up. If you screw up, learn from it. Ask yourself, why did my income fall? Why did my business collapse? Why did this deal go south? Why does this person not want to do business with me moving forward? What's wrong? Let, 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 let's look at everything here and make adjustments, right? So here's the deal. Learn to embrace adversity. All the setbacks, difficulties, are opportunities to grow and learn. Setbacks are opportunities for self improvement. Setbacks equal opportunity for self-improvement. I've learned way more from falling on my ass than I've learned when 
I was making so much damn money every Friday. I didn't even know how it was coming in, but it was coming in. Okay. I'm telling you guys right now, I've learned way more in my career when I do temporarily screw something up, mess up, fumble the football. Cause then I'm like, why did I fumble? This is why I fumbled. Okay. Now we're going to change, learn, adapt, grow, advance, and never do it again. Cause here's the deal. More setbacks, as long as you grow means more fortitude, more mental toughness, more wisdom, and eventually more inner peace. Okay. So look at challenges and setbacks and adversity bumps in the road as opportunities for you to learn, grow, and advance. Okay. Next up, we're talking about mental toughness, mental toughness. We're building a strong mental mentality, attitude, mindset. This is the deal. That's on my Instagram handle is Alex Morton Mindset. Okay. And I thought about changing it to Alex Morton. I said, you know what? Screw it. A-M-M, Alex Morton Mindset. My, my initials are Alexander Mark Morton, AMM. That's where it came from. I don't know what year it was when I when I when I made that, but I'm glad I did. Why? Because mindset is everything. Go study the best of the best out there. Their mindset is bulletproof, ladies and gentlemen. They have razor sharp mentalities. They have positive mental attitudes. They have mental toughness. Okay, so here we go. Number two on building mental toughness. Ready? Focus on what you can't control. Focus on what you can control. Focus your attention and energy on the things that you personally can influence. And then let go of all the other things. This makes me think about when COVID first happened. I was living, I was renting in uh, Miami, Sunny Isles, Porsche Tower, where, you know, they, they, they put our Rolls Royce in our living room. It was pretty cool. We were, we were renting back then, right? And I remember getting back from a tour and it was during Miami spring break. That's when it really happened. And I remember my friends were calling me like, yo, did you turn on the news? Turn on the news, turn on the news. It was the first lockdown. Keep in mind, I was on a plane every 48 to 72 hours from pretty much 2012 to 2020. Like, I'm not making this up. I kept the receipts. Like, th th this was my life. If you pull back old YouTube videos, Facebook videos, Instagram, like, I basically invented the art of touring inside the direct selling industry, right? Probably. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I don't take a lot of credit, but I'm going to take credit for doing tours because before I was doing tours, I didn't really see too many people out there doing tours. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. And then they're like, yo, you can't leave your, you can't leave. Like it's a lockdown. Like, what does that mean? It means stay, stay your ass inside. There's this thing out there. There's this virus. I'm not going to get into that whole thing, but you know, all of that was happening. And I'm like, holy shit. I was freaking out because I'm like, man, I've made mil tens of millions of dollars traveling, touring, speaking. And now I can't do that. I was freaking out. And I remember calling my mentor, Bob Proctor. And I said, Bob. What do you think about what's going on? And he said, what are you talking about? I said, what do you think? He was up in Canada, which is even worse up there. I'm like, what do you think about this lockdown stuff, man? What, what do you think? And he paused and he responded and said, I don't. And I remember thinking to myself, what does he mean? I, I don't. The whole world's talking about COVID-19 in this lockdown. He said, I don't think about it because I can't influence it. He said, instead of worrying and putting yourself into a fearful, angry vibrational frequency, why don't you look at it as an opportunity to learn and to grow, spend more time on Zoom, spend more time on FaceTime, spend more time building relationships with all of your people and watch what happens to your business. Well, I took his advice and our company literally Forexed, quadrupled in sales during the COVID lockdown. So why, what does that story mean to you? It means focus on what you can control. Focus your attention and energy on the things that you personally can influence and let go of everything else. And guys, I know it's hard. I know it's tough. I'm sure a lot of you follow me on Instagram, Alex Morton Mindset. I get so 
inundated sometimes with what's going on in the world. I get so upset. I get so angry with, you know, the pol the political spectrum right now in this country. I get so pissed off and frustrated with the way the world views America right now. I get so pissed off and upset about the crime rates and all this bullshit happening in certain cities around the country. And I get so crazy about it. But then I have to remind myself, you know, can I make a difference? Can I post about it? And then, yeah, I can. But is my time, energy, and effort spent better elsewhere? Probably so, right? Probably so. So build mental toughness and focus your energy and attention on things that you can positively influence and even maybe change, okay? Next up with mental toughness, guys, that's what today's about, mental toughness. I want you to get off of this call when we're done and say, you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be tougher, man. I'm going to be tougher. I'm not going to let this dumb shit rattle me, rattle me. You can't, you cannot let the external world influence your internal world, right? You have to control your mind. You have to control your emotions. You have to control your vibrational frequency. You are emitting out into the universe 24, seven, 365. You can't let what Biden or Trump or Putin or Ukraine or whoever, wherever, your mom, your dad, your husband, your wife, you can't let that infect your inside. Something else you must always do is this, okay? Practice self-discipline, self-control, and delayed gratification. Practice self-discipline, self-control, and delayed gratification. Stick to your commitments. If you say you're going to do something, best you do it. If I say I'm going to be on a call at 11 a.m., I'm on the call at 11 a.m. If I tell my trainer I'm going to be there at you know, noon tomorrow to train. I'm there at 11.58, ready to rock and roll and train. Like keep your commitments. Successful people keep their commitments, right? They don't just, you know, wave around in the wind. No, they're like, yo, if I say I'm going to do it, I'm doing it, man. And commitments to other people are important, but keeping your commitments and your promises to yourself are even more important. Because when you say I'm doing this and then you do it subconsciously, guess what? You're programming your self-image as somebody who's reliant, who's responsible, who's committed, who's decisive, who's disciplined, right? And you can only train your mind, your mental toughness by doing things a certain way for long periods of time until you cement them into your subconscious mind. So practice self-discipline, self-control, delayed gratification, right? Practice keeping your word. Because this helps cultivate a sense of inner strength and inner confidence, right? And remember, all these people, you're like, oh man, he's so confident, she's so confident, it's so amazing, right? If you backtrack their story 5, 10, 15 years, a lot of confident people today were not confident people yesterday, meaning five to 10 years ago. There was a point in time in my life, I was probably always relatively a confident person for whatever reason. I was very naive. I had naivety about the future and I just always believed in myself. But there were plenty of times where I was not as confident as I am today. It, it, again, it, th th these are habits you build over periods of time. These are things that you must do over and over and over and over and over and over again to build this level of mental toughness, okay? Furthermore, we must always be developing emotional resilience, right? Ability to bounce back from disappointments and not lose our temper. So many people, man, including me at times, we get so mad and pissed and frustrated and screaming and yelling and breaking shit. We can't do that. You know, we can learn a lot from Kobe Bryant, mama mentality. He said, I never got two highs on the highs. I never got two lows on the lows. I was always kind of in this, 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 this even keel, you know, attitude and mentality, you know, and Bob Proctor taught me that as well, right? He said, listen, when things happen, three things really happen. Write this down. When things happen, three things happen. Number one, it is what it is accepted. It is what it is accepted. Eat, like, listen, last week, you know, we lost one of our corporate executives and a dear friend of mine. He passed away. It sucks. It's painful. You get mad. You get upset. But it is what it is. And we got to accept it, ladies and gentlemen. When they locked us down during COVID, it is what it was. And we, you know, I'm not saying accept it, but I'm saying, you know, it is it is what it is. You know, when something happens, three things happen. Number one, it is what it is. 
Accept it. Number two, take the good. Find the good. Search for the good. Discover the good. In every situation, there's something good happening. I don't want to, I don't like to use this example, but when there are wars around the world and people die, children, children die, there are certain families in our country and different countries around the world that earn millions, hundred millions, and if not billions of dollars. Right now I'm in Miami, Florida. We were on a yacht the other day with my wife and her mom and the yacht captain said, you see, you guys see that house over there? I'm like, yeah, that house is badass, man. What's up with the house? He goes, that's the CEO of Pfizer. Pfizer, the the company that made all the vaccines, right? So COVID-19 happened. You don't think the Pfizer family made some dinero because of what happened with COVID, right? You don't think the people that make bombs and AK-47s and ammo and ammunition and rifles, you don't, you don't think those guys and girls are making some damn money when America goes to war. Okay, come on, man. No matter how bad something is, it's gonna be good for someone somewhere, okay? So when something happens, number one, accept it. It is what it is, accept it. Number two, find the good, discover the good. Find the good, discover the good, okay? And number three, forgive, forget, and let go of everything else, right? So if something happens, hey, it is what it is, accept it. Find the good. and then let go and, 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 and forget and forgive everything else, right? The past, the definition of past, one of the definitions that I've seen is it's it no longer exists. It already happened, right? And I know there's some, you know, physicists out there that will try to, you know, fight that. But to me, my, my opinion on it is whatever happened this morning, it's gone. I can't go change what happened at 8 a.m. because it ain't 8 a.m. anymore. Does that make sense, right? So it is what it is, accept it, find the good, forgive and forget everything else. Do your best to always stay calm, cool, and collective. When I was having serious challenges in my business, okay, this is what I used to do. I used to take whatever problem it was, I would take the problem, I would write it on a piece of paper. Let's just say this is the piece of paper. I would put it in the middle of a table. I would then back away from the table. I would look at the problem and I would say, is this problem in me or outside of me? Okay. And I would say, well, it's outside of me because it's on a piece of paper and I'm standing over here against the wall. And then I would look around all the chairs on the table and I would say, how would Grant Cardone solve this problem? How would Ed Milet solve this problem? How would Rob Dyrdek solve this problem? How would my father or my grandfather solve this problem? How would Bob Proctor or Tony Robbins solve this problem? So what it, what, what that does is it, it it makes, first off, it minimizes the challenge, the issue, the problem that I have or you have by getting it out of you on the paper and on a table and then try to push yourself in the shoes of your mentors, you know, people that inspire you and say, you know what, how would they handle this challenge or situation, right? That is one way to solve problems. And by doing that, by the way, you're going to build mental toughness. You will continue to build mental toughness when you do these things. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, to build mental toughness, you want to live in gratitude and you want to focus on the things in your life you're grateful and thankful for. I know some of you right now, you're like, you know what, man? I, I, I got nothing to be grateful for. I'm broke. I'm broken financially. I'm overweight. I'm not in shape. I'm pissed off. My boss just fired me. My girl left me. Shit sucks. This is what I'll say to you, man. You're alive. You are alive. Tonight when we all go to bed, I don't know the exact number, so don't quote me on this, but there will be over 10,000 people that do not wake up tomorrow. On this planet, there will be 10,000 people that go to bed tonight and do not wake up tomorrow. So what does that mean? That means if you wake up tomorrow morning, man, be grateful, be thankful. Thank God you got air in your lungs, you got blood pumping through your heart, man, and you got another shot at this thing called life. So when we're talking about mental toughness, ladies and gentlemen, it is always a work in progress, all right? Me, it's a work in progress. My mentors, it's a work in progress. For you, it's a work in, work in progress. But make commitments, keep your commitments, learn to embrace adversity and learn to look at minor setbacks and challenges and small little failures here as learning 
learning tools. Like, yo, this sucks. I'm going to learn from this. So it never happens again. Remember, we are always on this quest of this progressive realization of a worthy ideal goal, dream, and life. We're always working towards our best and highest version of ourselves. Okay. So guys, I hope you got a ton of value today on the Alex Morton show. Listen up. If you're listening to this on Amazon, uh, Spotify, Apple, drop a five-star rating, leave a comment, leave a review. If you're watching this on YouTube, let me know uh, what you like best about this episode. And remember, only about one-third of you guys watching this right now are actually subscribed on the Alex Morton Mindset YouTube channel. The more you like, the more you comment, the more you subscribe, the bigger and the better we can get, and the more people we can help. So as always... God bless you. God bless your family. God bless this world and go out there and make the rest of your day a great fucking day. Let's go. See you next week on the Alex Morton Show. Bye for now.